Good afternoon. Welcome to Dog on the Plot. And we will be on the plot this week, um, but we're just starting in the greenhouse because it is a red letter day. Um, you may have noticed from the opening shots that we've had sunshine. <laughs> we've actually had some sunshine and it's making a difference because, let me show you this. I said a red letter day, but it's really a yellow <laughs> letter day. We have our first and only ripe tomato and um, I had to come on here to share this moment with you. So here we go. It's pretty firm. Oh, but it's come straight off. And there it is. This variety is sun gold. And in a surprising turn of events, um, that is actually a sun gold tomato. I don't think it could be anything else. I think my labelling is actually correct. Um, it could be a Jen's Tangerine, but I grew that last year and they were a little bit larger. Never grown sun gold before. Um, for those of you who have been with me since the winter, or <laughs> when did we sow tomatoes? March? Um, these were, this was really old seed that my mom like found in her shed. So um, I don't think it even had a date on it. I wasn't sure it would germinate. But here we have a sun gold tomato, the very first one, an F1, so I can't save the seed from this, although, I mean, you can and grow something, but it won't necessarily be the parent plant. But let's see. Let's see if everything everyone raves about with sun gold is true. Yeah. That's really good. Sorry, barky dog ruining my moment there. So let's hope that that is the first of many. But um, surveying what we have, I don't know. The blue fire are the ones that are looking most promising, but perhaps that's just because um, I'm not expecting those to go red. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a little while before we get anything else. Other things in the greenhouse though include cucumbers growing now so I think that's my largest but there's another one over there Got some smaller ones growing over here any more for any more oh we've got a little one down there so some of these are kind of um, short stubby gherkiny type ones some are market more but here my labeling did fail I'm not this has got plenty of flowers on this is the one I've been cropping from so far which have been like mini mini ones um but yeah pretty good sweet potatoes going okay loofah <laughs> yeah um pepper there i think that is actually one of my seeds and um, the chocolate pepper from real seeds so that's exciting um but these peppers i'm pretty sure are the ones that i purchased um and then we have flowers on the aubergines whether there'll be enough time to actually get those pollinated and growing fruits who knows but um but yeah not bad um so what have i been up to because it seems like ages since i last spoke to you and that's because last week's video i filmed at the very start of the week and this week's video i'm filming at the very end of the week so for me it's been sort of two weeks since um i've been on camera and um yeah, I've been doing quite a lot actually. I've been tidying up the plot. I'm still tidying up the plot, ready for our tour. Um, probably not later today because it's really windy, so I'll do it first thing Tuesday morning. So I'll be releasing the video on the day um, that we do the tour. Um, but yeah, I've been doing a lot of weeding, a lot of pulling up of the grass from the sides of the bed. Um, but I'll, I'll show you all that um, tomorrow morning. Um, what I've been doing in here is sowing seeds. So some of them have come up. So these are all the ones that I was sowing at the end of last week's video. So on the 2nd of August and we're now on the 14th. Um, so I've had just under a couple of weeks and they're looking pretty good. So there's beetroots in there. Um, there's some brassicas. Uh, what else? Chard. Um, kale yeah and then I've just done another tray here which will be winter radishes so I've got just there, uh, black Spanish uh, China rose and that one is the Runder Schwarzer so I'm, I don't have 
enormous look with radishes so we shall see how they go um i have direct sown radishes before and they work no better than the ones i do in plugs so i thought let's do it in plugs at least i can control where they end up let me shut the dog up and then on the shelf above i've just been sewing so we've got all sorts in here uh some flowers we've got some delphiniums uh, a few late calendula some evening primrose uh, we've got herbs there's dill there's coriander there's parsley um and i've got greens and oh, sorry i don't know why the camera drifted then um, and um those are mostly going to be for the greenhouse when the tomatoes come out the uh greens will go in and yeah pretty pretty happy with that and uh, yeah I've just um, been direct sewing into the beds here as well and uh, so that's more kind of winter greens and things uh, and slowly also getting my brassicas out into spots as they free up both here and on the plot so I'm feeling rather in control and um, organized and I want to say ahead of myself but I'm not because these were mostly sewings that I was going to do in July and have now ended up like beginning of August mid August so another thing that you can do in August is take cuttings from tender perennials and I have some lovely salvias and a penstemon and maybe other things we'll have a look around and see which ones we want to do um, but yeah I'm going to take some cuttings to overwinter in the greenhouse just in case I lose things in the beds over winter if we have another one of those crazy cold snaps. Now my salvia hot lips survived last winter's cold snap easily, it was fine, um, so I'm not too worried about that. But it'd be nice to propagate from that and be able to put some more around the garden. Um, my other salvias I overwintered because they were still in pots but now they're in the ground so I want to keep them in the ground but I also want some insurance cuttings. I have no luck propagating, none. I don't think I've ever propagated anything successfully. No, that can't be true. Um, the house plants I can do okay, um, which we did together the other day. But, um, but yeah, most of the stuff that I try and propagate from the garden just dies. But I've been reading about it, I've been watching stuff. I think I've got some tricks up my sleeve that might help me to propagate some tender perennials. So before we go out and find the cuttings, um, I've made up my compost. I'm just going to get everything ready because you want as little time between cutting the plant and getting it into the compost. Um, so my first tip, trick, um, again this is me trying this out so don't take my word for it, let's see if it works. Um, but the first thing is to make a really free draining, gritty, um, airy compost mix, which I've done. In here, hold it up, <laughs> I have uh, Sylvia, is it Sylvia, is that how you pronounce it? Silver, silver um, compost, uh, which I have to say um, is the peat free comp compost that has impressed me the most so far. Um, I know Jessie from Plot 37 was talking about it on her video last week and um, I got a split bag for half price and you know what it's good it is good it feels good anyway um, but I'm taking her word for it that it performs well too. So I've got that in here I've got a little bit of coir I've got um, perlite and I've got grit and plenty of it. I'm going to put it into terracotta pots. This is because terracotta can breathe and um, the water is wicked away so um, they're not going to get soggy and um, rot in the pot, one hopes. Um, now in terms of putting the soil into, um, you know, it feels like I'm making a mountain out of a molehill here but as I say I've had no success before so I'm trying all the tricks. Um, put your compost into the pot like that. <laughs> what, <laughs> what I mean by that is just put it loosely into the pot as opposed to firming it down. And I think this is where I've gone wrong in the past. 
So what I mean by that is I'm just putting the compost into the pot without patting it down. So it's just nice and loose like that. So you can kind of level off the top, but I'm not patting it down like I normally would, which is, as I say, what I think I've done wrong in the past. So I'm keeping the air in the mix. Okay, so I can give it a little shake, I guess. But don't, oh God, it's just so tempting. All you want to do is flatten it down, but I'm not. Um, right, so that is prepared. Should I water the compost as well? That's probably a good idea. So let's just get it like damp. Okay, so now I think we're ready to go find our cuttings. So the first thing I've done to prepare is get a bowl of rainwater to put the cuttings in, which Dory seems to think was for her. Um, but here is my salvia pink one. Don't know the name of it. Um, and then you can just see my hot lips in the back there. So let's look for a good cutting. So what you're looking for is a stem with no flower um, and that looks nice and healthy. So I, I can only see side shoots that look like that, which I'm assuming is okay. That one looks quite good. So I'm going to cut it below a node and stick it straight in my water. Uh, I've just cleaned and um, sanitized my snips. There's one. That's, quite short. That's longer. Oh, it smells so good. I love salvias. I love how they smell. Yeah, yeah it's really tricky finding one without a flower bud. I suppose you could nip out the bud. Let's go for that one. Okay, we've got four of that one. Let's let's try the hot lips. Right, before I um, go get some of the purple ones, the amaranth, amaranth uh, lips, um, I'm going to pot these ones um, so that, you know, it's quickly going into the soil. Um, and plus I don't want to mix up the colours. These are both hot colours, that's a blue colour or purple colour. Um, right. So I'm going to take my cutting. I've already cut just below a node, so that's fine. I'm going to take off the lower leaves. I'm going to cut those leaves in half. Oh, did I show any of that? Was I doing that down here? <laughs> I'll do another one in a minute. But that's what I'm left with. And now I think the other trick is that rather than making a hole um, with my chopstick, as I normally would, um, instead you just push the cutting in like so and um, at the edge of the pot again I was doing that down here wasn't I let's move the camera and then I'll show you one properly okay so there's my cutting I've already cut just below the node and trim off the middle leaves uh, those ones can go as well I'm just going to cut down those top ones like that and that's my cutting. And then instead of making a hole 
I'm just going to push it into the soil without breaking it. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I've done four salvias and a penstemon and the final stage was to water the seedlings and put a polythene bag over the top and secure that. The point of which is to keep in the humidity um, and hopefully they stay moist and humid um, but don't rot because they're too damp. What I didn't do is um, put any rooting powder in, which I could have. I've got it right there in front of me, didn't even think about it. But people on TV don't tend to put rooting powder, so let's see how they do without it. Looking at these and thinking that I have to nurse these over the winter, I don't hold out that much hope, I have to be honest. <laughs> but let's keep our fingers crossed and uh, yeah, we'll see how they do. They'll see if these tricks uh, mean it works. So. So if you can think of any other tender perennials that um, would benefit from having a backup, uh, let me know in the comments below. Um, geraniums was the other one I was thinking of. Um, but, you know, my mom, she she like looks at a geranium and it propagates. So I might just let her <laughs> deal with those. <laughs> Seeing as I lost so many over winter anyway. Um, okay, so I'm calling that quits for today. And then I shall join you on the plot in the morning. I'm so glad I waited to do the tour today rather than yesterday when it was all blustery and a bit rainy. Um, yeah, today is just, this is August. This is what August should look like. Anyway, it um, occurred to me that it had been quite a while actually since I showed you round the plot. And I looked back on my videos and of course we had a quick look when I was telling you that I got the second place in the newcomer award um, but we didn't really have a proper look around and I don't think we've had a proper look around since I put stuff in um, which was exactly eight weeks ago so eight weeks ago I put in the corn I put in the squash uh, the tomatoes um, the courgettes yeah well pretty much everything the um, calabrese they went in at the same time so uh, I had that really busy week when I was off work and so much of the stuff went out and yeah it's eight weeks onwards 
and um, as you can see behind me the the plot is abundant and lush and gorgeous and full of colour and greenery um, there are some failures in there and we will we will come across those um, but the difference eight weeks makes I mean yeah it kind of blows me away when I, I look back at the video of when I was planting and you know there were just these brown bare beds with these small little plants going in um, and now it, you can barely see any brown it's all green um, so that's pretty exciting anyway it's going to be a bit of a whistle stop tour sorry I keep looking around because on a morning like this you know all the mature gents are going to be out and if they see me filming yeah they'll lose all respect for me <laughs> but actually it's pretty quiet down here hmm. Oh, this is such a day where you just want to kind of, I didn't even bring my tea um, because I know I've got to be quick, but yeah, you just want to sit and enjoy this. Um, the reason I haven't got my tea and I'm not hanging around here is because mum has decided it's time to prune the um, pyracantha that goes up the wall um, where my hot border is and where the water butts are. So I've left her to it with the dog and um, I know once she finishes that she's going to get a snip happy and uh, start looking for other things to cut down. So I need to get back there and see what she's up to. Um, but we're here now, we're going to have our tour. This is our mid-August allotment tour. So we'll go um, through the beds, but just to sort of give you the view as you come up the lane towards the plot, all these cosmos, my dahlias, the calendula, uh, the sunflowers as well, have all come out. Obviously the um, cosmos was all self-sown and didn't have to do anything for that. Oh, and the tree spinach as well, gives that lovely colour. Um, so for all my moaning about my dahlias not blooming, these ones that I chucked on the allotment because I thought they were too gaudy for the home garden. <laughs> they're huge. The blooms are huge. They're absolutely gorgeous. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Just the way it goes, isn't it? Uh, so all the cosmos. Um, I put in the vegetable mallow as well, and that's, um, that's looking like it will flower soon. This is the other... Um, Dahlia, which is, a, well, it was labelled speckled mix. I've since discovered that it's called gladiosa. So the speckled um, orange and red, well, yellow and red one is the traditional colour, but 10% of the tubers produce pure red blooms, and this one is one of their 10%. So there we go. Uh, it's just so cheery. It's absolutely beautiful. I could not be happier with the front of the plot. <laughs> Okay, so bed one is the potato bed and the pea bed. Um, these are the Charlotte, I think, on this side. Let's have a little check. My label. Oh, these are the Saxon. So these ones are okay. Uh, a little bit of slug damage. The Charlotte are on the other side. Uh, and they have been absolutely fabulous. No damage whatsoever. You can see the plants are looking pretty straggly and over now. So these are second early, so they're all ready to lift, but I'm just lifting them as and when I want to eat them really. Uh, the peas in the cage in the middle are pretty much over, but still some pods to pick. My nephew has been enjoying the pea pods so much. <laughs> He's, yeah, really into harvesting and eating those on the plot as plot snacks and then giving Dory the shells to eat, which she then promptly vomits. Um, but yeah, I think the peas are um, about ready to be cleared. So where the uh, first early potatoes were, along here, I've now replaced with brassicas. Um, some of these kales are starting to put on some quite good growth. So that's good, um, but there's a random mix of things. There's different kales that possibly could be a kalet, um, but I'm just kind of filling, filling in the gaps as the potatoes come out. Now I've also put in this new structure. This is one of two. Um, I had an old tent, and I mean old, like 
gosh, when was the last time I would have camped in it? At least 20 years ago. Um, so uh, the the actual cover of the tent just needs to be recycled. But the um, tent poles make perfect little cages. Um, I just need to find netting big enough to put over them now. And bed two is the squash bed. <laughs> I've, there's still a way to go here, I'm sure. Um, yeah, this. Uh, my feeling is in a couple more weeks, this is just going to be absolute jungle. Um, but it's getting there. It is getting there. I lost one squash from this patch that got eaten by slugs. Um, but the other squashes are kind of making up for it. Um, and I think I lost two sunflowers those really high winds and um, I'd fast I had secured them but I'd used twine and then the stems grew too big and basically um, it chopped itself in half um, so that was a lesson learned use tights <laughs> use old stockings to tie in your sunflowers um, but we don't just have foliage we also have pumpkins let me show you and this one is the biggest this is Big Max name of the variety I didn't give it the name and there, ooh, there he is and he is a biggie um, my nephew is really excited about this one wants to harvest it I keep saying no I have to wait till Halloween um, but yeah there are lots of other little squashes growing um, oh that's fine And then this one, which is in the middle of the squash bed, um, and it's supposed to be a winter squash, actually turned out to be a courgette, which is great because you'll see my uh, actual courgette patch has been very disappointing. What I'd enjoy, I think, of this bed is the tromboncinos, which were tromboncinos, so I planted them in the right place to go up the arch. I need to keep... <laughs> keep uh, putting them in um, and I've had one tromboncino off it so far let's see if any, there are any more ready to harvest there's a little one over there oh growing quite quite long though that one um, there's another one there another one there Another one there. Oh, and one there. Then we have one on this side as well, also planted in the right place. And they are growing up the arch. So I'm calling that a success. Happy with that bed. Now on to the slightly less impressive one. So this is bed three. And I've been working on this bed uh, over the last couple of days because the weeds had just come over from here and absolutely covered the bed and you could barely see the raspberries. Um, we've had some fatalities in terms of raspberries so there's one bush here which is one from my cousin's house. This is the one that I moved from my own home that is the full gold. Um, we have a very unpromising looking stick and then we've got two uh, Shaganas, which are the ones that I bought from B&Q. Oh, 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 hello. Oh, and another one. Oh, three. There we go. Oh. <laughs> mm. Mm, yeah, they taste good. Um, so yes, yeah, the six plants that I put in from the B&Q only two have survived which is a bit disappointing also disappointing on this bed was the courgette so we have one fairly okay courgette plant here yet to produce anything one here which has a baby coming um, but the ones from here and here and here all succumbed to the slugs which was really disappointing because I don't think either of those ones are going to produce the um, what is it called summer bowl or bowl courgette you know like the round ones so oh well um, but what has taken off in this bed are the tomatoes 
So I can't remember which variety these are. I think they might be the cerise cherry. Um, this one looks a bit small because as I was weeding this bed, I accidentally tore some of the branches off. But these ones are really bushing out. Um, they could be the latter variety because they are a bush variety. But yeah, maybe I'll look back and I said on the video <laughs> what I am. Um, what. Uh, variety these were but yeah this one is really nice and big and there are actually some fruits on them but mostly just flowers so we'll see if there's enough time for them to ripen before before the cold gets them but uh, I took all the coriander out of that bed as well if you remember there was a big line of coriander and um, I've put that in the shed to save for seed um, and the only other things in that bed are the comfrey that I put in which is looking great so nice big plants now of the comfrey um, which can be used for feeds Okay, so bed four is the sweet corn and squash bed um, that also has random beans, saskatoons, um, tree spinach, uh, also dwarf beans, very much in the spirit of uh, permaculture, I guess. Um, this is going well as well. So uh, the, the, these are the mini corn at the front um, and they're still quite short, um, but the normal corn has silks and pollen and it's fun to go around and uh, give them a little shake and make sure that they are pollinating so we do have some signs of cobs there we go but they are still quite teeny tiny at the moment again it's just about hoping that we've got long enough left in the season for them to get where they need to go. Um, right, um, and in terms of squash on here, we've got some different varieties. So that one is an interesting shape. And we've got a quite nice sized one there. I've started putting like um, bricks and things underneath the ones that I've put on a bit of size so that the bottoms don't rot on the ground. In terms of like the beans and things here, um, some are going, some are going up the string. Uh, this pumpkin has decided to go up there as well. These climbing beans are fine. Um, these were all put in late, so um, it's, it's great that they're flowering. Let's hope that we'll also get beans. This bean arch, um, unfortunately, has not been so lucky. So we do have a couple of beans holding on and, and trying to get up but uh, most of these got eaten oh there's another another good squash down there to get a brick for that one I think considering the trouble I went to for this in the storm uh, my life in my own hands um, it didn't quite work out I think the problem was more this side of the bed which you can see I've done a big clear out um, all the beans on this side got eaten, all the edible lupins got eaten, um, so that's a real shame. And actually, this raspberry doesn't look brilliant. Other things in this bed though have taken off, so the rhubarb is still alive, the perennial kale's fine, the horseradish is romping away, Saskatoon, just a berry, other berries at the back, um, not so much this plum tree, I, I don't think that's that's doing very well. Um, if you notice this very makeshift um, raised bed uh, just plonked together from drawers from a divan, a divan single bed, um, which is the bed frame that I use um, on the other bed for the brassicas. We'll get to that in a bit. Um, but yeah, I can put something in that now that I've cleared all the wallflowers out of that space. Again, saving seed from those. Um, these are the Desiree potatoes haven't pulled up any of those yet so I'm not sure what they're like um, and a couple of kales in between um, but yeah this bed uh, has the um, still beginnings of a pond but my nephew has lost interest in my plot and is much more interested in his dad's now so um, so I've lost my little helper really um, so down to me to, to finish the pond at some point not high on my list of priorities right now okay next bed so we'll call this bed six um, carrots brilliant 
carrots, not so great in that one, but fine. Cosmos, self-seeded, doing wonderfully. Poll bringing in the pollinators, look. Um, yeah, super chuffed with that. Volunteer squash down here, not quite sure what varieties. Don't think there's any fruits growing on them. Um, I thinned these swedes, or rutabaga, um, but they look, yeah, a little worse for wear. Not sure we're going to get anything from those. Beetroot, I've been harvesting as mini beets. Um, these are the golden ones, and um, I'm trying to just harvest a few and thin them out to try and get some bigger ones ready for the horticultural show. More tomatoes, which we do have fruits on. But they are tiny plants again can't remember if these are cerise or latter um, but yeah they're doing fine uh, well actually the divan bed frame no longer has that many brassicas in it's got one kale there and one kohlrabi holding on there um, but it's got the celeriac in now uh, beans are going well on here in fact you can see some that need harvesting look at those beauties so these are ah these are actually ones that mark grew a couple of years ago and he gave mama plant and she had it in her backyard and then she saved the seed and a couple of years later i have sown the seed and now we have brilliant purple beans what else do we have oh these two um tiny tiny tomatoes don't think they're going to do much what's going on in the brassica cage um, most of the calabrese have been harvested i think there's one growing here let's see if we can see it yeah i think you can just see that one growing um, and i'm now leaving the ones that i've harvested to produce the shoots off the edge which make lovely tender stem broccoli uh, there's also a kale in here because labelling. Lastly in this bed is um, the rows of main crop potatoes and more, oh, <laughs> I was going to say more kales, but looks like we have a broccoli. <laughs> I think that needs harvesting. That's not going to get any bigger than that, is it? Um, these are all main crop potatoes, so I haven't lifted any of them yet. We've got a kohlrabi that's looking excellent over here. I've harvested quite a lot of kohlrabis that I originally thought were kales. And um, they've all had quite a lot of slug damage. But this one, fingers crossed, isn't looking too bad. Little, little hole there, but not too bad. This, not a kale, looks like it could be a Romanesco. But I'm not, gonna sure, not sure it's going to do any more than that. Some nice kales there though. Okay, bed seven. More potatoes. These are the salad blue and I have been harvesting these but they've had a lot of scab and slug damage. So I am thinking I should probably just whip all those out and free up the space now. Mum's ripped out some of these Cosmos because she says that there's not enough light getting to the beans which are looking fantastic. I did nip the tops out because they have exceeded the frame. Um, there are so many, so many on here. I'm eating, sorry I'm still eating this bean that I just took off the plant, <laughs> but I'm eating runner beans just every day for every meal. And I'm blanching and freezing so many. I'm gonna have a freezer full of them and I don't care. I love it. I think this is my only glut and I'm making the most of it. So yeah, pretty much in love with my bean structure. One job I can make my nephew do is go into the structure <laughs> and come up inside and find the beans that I can't reach. <laughs> um, but he does somewhat trample the Aztec broccoli that's at the side here. Uh, some more Cosmos, Jerusalem artichokes. Now, I mean, they're huge. Let's see how high they are. Uh, 
<laughs> so taller than me. Oh, this has got to be the thumbnail, hasn't it? There we go. Um, uh, but these are much smaller than the ones in the home garden. Um, but I think in the home garden, because they're grown in shade, they're trying to get up and reach the light, whereas these have got like full light and um, yeah, they're, they're loving life. Um, in between them, not getting much light, are some brassicas. Oh yeah, what happened to, do you remember I put this kale in because I snapped the cauliflower that went in? Oh look, it's still there. <laughs> I don't think you're going to make a cauliflower. Um, but the kale's looking nice. This one, is there a cauliflower? Nothing coming yet. This one, nothing much yet. No. Is that it? I thought it was another one. A bit hidden by the Jerusalem artichokes. Oh, it's that. <laughs> yes, it has been. Oh, hidden. Oh dear. Oh dear. Collapse of the... Oh, it's just... It's okay. It was just a, a branch from the side. Oops. You'll have to come to the compost heap. And the other side. So this is more tent poles. Um, I did have netting for this one, but it doesn't quite fit properly. So yeah, it's a bit haphazard. But the stuff inside it is looking good. I just lift up there. Take you in. Oh, you're in and I'm on the outside. Hope, hope that that's looking okay. Uh, there could be a kaylet, um, lots of Nero kales, um, but yeah, all looking good. And lastly, I think in this bed, no, actually there's two things left, just hidden by the net, are the uh, cadoons. So there's one, and there's the other one, and uh, they've really taken off well. So that's great. I think I've probably planted them too close together. And then the last of the onions. Well, not the last of the onions, actually. Or are they? I think there's some down here. Oh, yeah. Under the cosmos. There's some onions in there as well. These are the ones that I sowed. Well, first things I sowed on the plot, weren't they? But these Japanese onions, they've clearly bolted. They need to get out the ground, really. Takes us to the final bed of the plot, which is the Fruit Tree Guild, which is looking a lot tidier than it was, but not very full. So we've got hollyhocks and uh, comfrey growing on the edges there. We've got the mint growing in a pot. All these strawberries that I put in are doing excellent. They all took, I think. Uh, yeah, all looking really lovely and the berry plants did well in here they're, they're going over now and i do still have one sunflower holding on we'll see if that produces a bloom um, the real casualty in here is the cherry tree um, which i started pruning and it was just brown it was just dead wood and at that point i stopped because it was depressing speaking of depressing <laughs> These old compass bays are still here. I still haven't dismantled them and they're just getting weedier and weedier while I wait. Um, what is quite amusing is um, there's my greenhouse. <laughs> Absolutely covered by bindweed and uh, what, what weed is that? Is that red campion? Um, yeah. <sighs> um, plant some gin on uh, Instagram was talking about her plot and the scary area and I really like that so this is my scary area and at some point I will tackle it not today less scary but in need of work is the new compost bays so you can see how much uh, weeding I've been doing so two bays have been kind of filled um, and I've still got this one here um, but the weeds are starting to grow into it beside it I've got my enormous pile of cardboard which I have just added more to. What I need to do I think is put all of this and this into the empty one while layering with cardboard and potentially the grass clippings that I just brought in from the church as well um, and then that will all be in one bay and we'll have the proper ratio of carbon 
to nitrogen and will hopefully decompose and be ready to use in the spring um, but yeah while I was doing the work on these beds it was a case of just throwing it in there so I could keep the momentum and you may have noticed that um, the plot was fairly neat until we got to about bed six <laughs> seven um, and that's because I've been strimming I've been so you can see here actually I've been clearing the weeds and the grass that's been encroaching on the beds. Um, it turns out that that is quite a hefty job. Um, and I got up to this point, and then you can see from there, this is what I've been kind of dealing with. So all the grass that's growing up over into the beds, grass, weeds, and enormous slugs absolutely enormous slugs who gather in the edges of the beds and um, I suppose procreate and produce more of themselves and eat all my crops. But just standing here surveying my kingdom. Um, God I'm pleased. I am so pleased. It's come so far and actually for all the little failures I don't think I could have imagined in December when I first got the plot that it would look like this, that it would be this abundant and lush and green and just gorgeous. And it's definitely somewhere I still want to be every day, um, even <laughs> if it's weeding. Now I know some of you are only here for the Mark plot updates, so um, let's head over to his side and I'll just show you what he's been up to. So he's got his beans, his corns, his squash and new additions to the plot. There are four of these, I think this one's supposed to be me, uh, I think that's my nephew, there's Mark and there's my sister at the back. <laughs> And, um, but they've been doing really good work. Even my sister's been mucking in. Um, so they've cleared the trench of all the old magazines that were decomposing in there. They've started to build a little pond. Potatoes have come out here, still some to come out there. And they were great potatoes, really impressive, better than mine. Um, they've, he's covered up this section again um, and moved these beds over here that he's built and sowed some seed in one of them. He's built a little cage, so that just needs finishing off. Still needs to put the glass in the greenhouse. Uh, the comfrey at the back has gone mad. Um, he's got a lot of wood to work with. But yeah, starting to take shape for sure. And those are the onions he harvested the other day from the greenhouse. Really lovely. But yeah, we've, um, as a whole family, been down here the last three or four days, um, doing bits, weeding, all mucking in. Uh, it's been a very much a family affair and it's been lovely, really good. Um, and as I say, just really nice to spend time down here. So thank you for joining me this week. Um, I have to go now, I have to go see what mum has chopped down from the garden. Um, also, I'm um, dog sitting again, different dog today. Um, maybe we'll outro with Dory and her friend and um, I shall catch you next week so thank you for watching like and subscribe and uh, yeah take care mm -hmm.